1938, our world was turned upside down when our mother was committed to a mental institution suffering from pellagra, a deficiency disease caused by malnutrition. Our daddy was left with three children to care for. I was eight years old, my two brothers ages one and a half and three years respectively. Determined to keep the family together, dad moved in with our grandparents. My aunt, uncle, and cousin, age five years, also lived with my grandparents. Times were tough, and although my dad, my aunt, and my uncle worked, they barely made enough to feed us. Dad said, you have to make the best of everything life hands you. And being my hero, I took him at his word. Little did I know I would have an opportunity to test his hypothesis in the very near future. I first met Mrs. Waddell, our next door neighbor, while playing in the front yard of my grandmother and grandfather's home. She was sitting on her front lawn with what looked like a small shovel. My grandmother said I always asked too many questions and living up to her opinion of me, I asked Mrs. Waddell what she was doing with that little shovel. And she said, I'm removing the crabgrass from the lawn. The lawn was covered with beautiful, lush, dark green Bermuda grass, which grows abundantly if weeded, crabgrass removed, and watered faithfully. As our friendship grew, I found Mrs. Waddell had many other talents. She embroidered the most beautiful pillowcases I had ever seen. I asked her if she would show me how to embroider, and she not only taught me how to embroider, but she gave me a set of pillowcases, the embroidery thread, and an iron-on pattern of beautiful flowers. I completed the pillowcases and placed them in my grandmother's chest, hoping someday to have one of my own. My relationship with Mrs. Waddell was one of pure delight. On one of my visits to her home, she was crocheting a pair of baby booties. They were crocheted of white mercerized cotton with a trimmed edging of either pink or blue on the top of the ruffled edge. A small rosebud was embroidered at the top. I once again called upon Mrs. Waddell to teach me how to crochet. She was puzzled why an eight-year-old would want to make baby booties. I told her I had seen a movie, The Little Princess, starring Shirley Temple. She had the most beautiful bouncy curls I had ever seen and dimples that were amazing. I could make and sell enough booties to get a permanent wave so I could have curls like Shirley. I realized I could never have dimples like Shirley. She seemed to have dimples everywhere, her cheeks, her elbows, her knees, and I'm sure places you couldn't see. I, I knew this well because I had spent a number of hours in front of the mirror trying to create dimples by pressing my fingers into my cheeks, but I could have the curls. You see, I had a long face, no dimples, knobby knees, and when I turned sideways, you could hardly find me. The next hurdle, the money to buy supplies. I contacted my local banker, my daddy. I presented my plan and convinced him I would be able to pay back the loan. I worked diligently until I had crocheted 25 pairs of baby booties. Aiming for the big time, I took my merchandise to the biggest department store in Fort Worth, Texas, Leonard Brothers. I went directly to the children's department and asked to see the buyer, and lo and behold, a sales lady brought forth the buyer. After closely inspecting the booty, she said, how much do you want for each pair? I said, 75 cents a pair. She said, I'll give you 50 cents a pair. And I said, I'll take it. I made enough money to pay back my loan, get a permanent wave at the beauty shop so I could have curls like Shirley Temple. And I had taken the city bus to downtown Fort Worth all by myself. I was sitting on top of the world. Daddy was right. You make the most of whatever comes your way. My only regret, my mom was not there to share the moment.